These are some of my acoustic damping panels that I've got installed in the video editing room. And uh, these are very cheap. They're built with leftover scrap wood and uh, leftover insulation from a housing project, as well as just random rags I had lying around the house. Uh, however, I need a few more of them and I want to mount them on this angled wall here. You can see I've got one of the old ones mounted there, but mounting that was very difficult since it's such a heavy thing. The fact that they're built out of wood and rather massive wood at that means that they weigh uh, about seven or eight kilos a piece. And mounting that on a wall like this, well, that's not the easiest thing. And I'm constantly afraid of having this thing fall down on my face. So I've been thinking for a while how I can possibly make these lighter and, of course, even cheaper. So let's just head down to the workshop and see what we can cook up. And here are the materials. So, quite early on I decided to use the ever unambiguous banana boxes. I'm not sure if you get these in every country, but around here this is the pinnacle of cheap box technology because you can get this for free in huge quantities at any supermarket and each box contains two halves so you really can make the most out of your space. So beyond that we actually have two expenses in building these. Uh, I have purchased a bunch of old towels from the charity shop. They are about uh, one euro to two euros each. I spent about 18 euros on them and I've got a bunch of the cheapest insulation I could find. This giant package of uh, stuff, which should be suitable to really make quite a bit more of these than I need. It was about 30 euros and another 20 if you include the ridiculously expensive insulation now if I got to go along with it. So the plan I've got here is uh, very, very simple. I want to optimize for production speed as much as possible. So, uh, I have considered the construction constraints for acoustic panels and they are incredibly relaxed. They don't need to be mechanically strong, uh, they do need to look kind of good, but uh, most of all they need to be light and easy to mount. So, what I have intended to do is uh, cut the depth of each box to the depth of insulation, about 150 millimeters. I'm just going to use a circular saw to swing, swing, swing all the four sides. And then I'm going to cut up a, a perfectly sized, slightly oversized piece of insulation to go inside the box and wrap that in fabric. In other words, there's going to be no positive fixing of either the insulation or the fabric. It's just going to be kind of stuck down using friction against the sides of a box and there is a reason for this because if I were to affix the insulation and fabric uh, inside the box permanently I would not be able to just screw this into the wall and that's uh, uh, a big thing. I don't want to have to have any kind of advanced mounting system for this. I just want to be able to run like two screws or even one screw through the cardboard and mount these. And in order to do that I need to be able to get the fabric out. So I can just go from the inside of the box, pull a screw through and then be done. Install the insulation and it's fixed. Uh, because when you're mounting these, it takes a fair amount of time to actually measure out your mounts if you uh, want to do it properly. I suppose you could use something like a hook and just uh, put that through a hole in the cardboard, but then you'd actually need hooks and that wouldn't quite work if you're trying to mount it on the angle of the wall like I'm trying to, because a hook would just allow for too much flex. So, let's see how well this theory works out while we're waiting for my old towels to go for the dryer. All right, and my charity store towels are now clean and out of the dryer, so we can move on to the project. In the meantime, I have been cutting up some more pieces of uh, insulation to fit into the banana boxes, and I've got a fair few of pieces done. Uh, something I have noticed is you do not want to have any oversize at all when cutting these. The best technique I found for cutting the insulation is to just put the banana box with the bottom to the insulation sheet and just cut right along it because these boxes are so soft that they really cannot handle any 
uh, force at all. And the result is, well, this one's a bit undersized, but uh, the result is something more like this, where it just fits absolutely snugly. And uh, when you put the towel in, that is enough to prevent it from falling out under normal load. Uh, if you oversize it, you just end up with a bulging, horrible box that's going to look like trash. But when you give a towel on, it really it takes a fair amount of force to actually get it to come out. So I think I'm going to do it this way. Uh, this one I've put together very simply. I've just put the towel one end in and uh, folded the insulation in and just used a piece of plastic to tuck the sides of the towel in along the edges. It's not going to win any beauty contents by any stretch of your imagination. It's going to be a bit better once I kind of tired of this up after final mounting because you, the entire point of these is for you to be able to mount the frame of a banana box before you mount the inter internal. So this is just going to have to come out again anyway. But uh, really, at this stage, after about uh, half an hour's work, uh, we are ready to start mounting these. So I think uh, I'm going to go between two methods of mounting them. I've got a precision nail gun, so I'm going to lug the air compressor upstairs, and then I've also got this carpeting tape. This is a thin tape you, is, you usually use to stick down carpets in, on like a uh, staircase and stuff like that. It's uh, usually very durable, very long lasting, so I think it could be a decent alternative for stuff that has to go on painted surfaces like doors and such. So we'll give it a go as well. But for the time being, I start hauling materials upstairs. Okay, we're back upstairs and we've got all the things we need to fix these. Uh, and I have considered where to put them and it would be silly to put them on that wall because I've got an entirely untreated ceiling and these are light and would be much better off going on there. So I'm going to think up some uh, random pattern to deal with this and uh, get them up. We'll see how well it goes. All right, so that's a couple of them bolted up to the ceiling. Now I've just got a piece of insulation wrapped in an old towel. I kind of sized it up to the box uh, beforehand. It's kind of tightened around the edge. So in theory, this should just poke inside and look decent. You can see you really can't have any oversize on these at all. All the boxes are just going to bulge uncontrollably. And there we go. That's the lot of them mounted. So I chose to put five of them in this room. I have good materials to make a few more, but they're not going to have a beautiful bananas on the side since they're made from the inner box. Uh, really, uh, I've learned a couple of things about it. These, uh, mounting the covers is a lot easier if you wrap it all the way around the piece of insulation and put a bit of tape to just kind of keep it in place while you're fiddling it into the box. Uh, if you're using a really small towel, however, it's really just easiest to just put the insulation into the box first and then you just uh, go and poke the cover in around the edges. That worked lovely. I've just got one towel I cut into two to make the two real ones there, since we've got the matching patterns. And uh, they, they're real sturdily in there. They, they're showing no signs of coming out and much unlike the more traditional big wooden frame ones I've got, if one of these chooses to come down on you, it's all just going to be a fluff of insulation and a towel, so there's nothing there to actually cause any damage. Whereas with these traditional ones, if you're mounting them in drywall or something less sturdy, you don't have good mount, well, they're, they're going to cause some serious damage if they come down, tumbling down on you. So I'm not going to do any proper demonstration about the performance of these, uh, because these are basically built like, like your traditional acoustic panel. They're just a box full of uh, insulation in this case, some kind of eco insulation-y type stuff, not fiberglass, but it's going to perform excellently anyway. Uh, in the end, the more of them you put out, the better it's going to sound. Uh, I did take a couple of microphone measurements in this room uh, after mounting them, and sadly it hasn't remedied any of the issues I've got. You can see both data points from my speakers there. Uh, I've got some horrible nodes there on the left one and the right one's got a huge bump at 250 hertz this is with differential equalization applied so yeah it's not too impressive a sounding room 
but they do eat up a bit of the fast reflection, fast echoey stuff uh, that I've had going on. If I clap my hands, if I had another hand to do it, there'd previously be a rather significant uh, flutter echo just going up and down between the floor and the ceiling, and that has been uh, partially remedied by these. So it's not a complete loss. But uh, yeah, for, I'm, 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 I'm quite happy with these. It's worked out very well. and. The best part by far by the, uh, about these panels is they weigh almost nothing. They weigh less than a kilo each, so mounting them with tape, with uh, staples, with anything is not going to be an issue because there's no mass to keep there, unlike the wooden ones. So with all those nice banana looking ones installed in the office, I'm going to put the rest of the ones I've got material for uh, into my bedroom because I've got a little home theatre thing going on there and there's no treatment in that room whatsoever. So for that I'm actually just going to make a little demo to see uh, how, how that room sounds and uh, how it sounds with uh, five of these tacked onto the wall. So let's just jump straight into it. Uh, this is what the very dim little room looks like. So I've got the TV and speakers mounted to this wall right here but in the other end of the room we have got one big entirely untreated wall and the same goes for this one. On the other side of the room there's a window so I'm not going to be able to do much there but it's covered with curtains all the time anyway since this is a man cave and it's never bright in here to begin with. So let's uh, put the microphone in some uh, spot and uh, do a bit of a demo. Alright so I'm now standing by my speaker I've got the microphone right over there by my normal listening position so I'm going to clap my hands a couple of times and uh, we'll see how that sounds after we're done. Yeah. All right, and there we have them all mounted. So, can you hear a difference? That definitely sounds a lot better to my ears, even though we wouldn't expect a very good result out of this because we don't have huge coverage. The coverage of the uh, acoustically important surfaces is really not very high, and since I wasn't be all Arty about it, I mounted them in random spots rather than doing any kind of maths or sciencey stuff in order to figure out where they're supposed to go. But hmm, nothing's prevented me from making more of them. The total cost for every single one of these has been about 50 euros. That's including an isolation and 20 euros worth of oldest tells from the charity shop. And really, that is not bad given the amount of soundproofing panels I've gotten out of them. So, with that, I'm going to have to thank you for watching, I hope you found this useful, and I hope you're going to make yourself some uh, banana box sound panels. Cheerio!